I don't think the Bills are suddenly going to become a run team. I think they're going to continue to lean on Josh Allen. I think Allen has learned how to throw an accurate football. 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 We have got to make some type of music. I think Allen has learned how to throw an accurate football. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube. What's going on? That's how we rock here. That is how we rock on Fantasy Football Today. That's why you need to hit subscribe, people. That's why you need to hit like. We've got another week of Fantasy Football talk for you here with six episodes plus uh, one live stream. Which going to Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. That was real? We're recording that this? That was real. That was real. Oh. God, Dave, we got to end the intro. We got to get into the show. You ready? Let's go. Let's go. Training camp risers. Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Christian, Mah- uh, Christian McCaffrey ahead of Jonathan Taylor. Jalen Hurts ahead of Patrick Mahomes. I don't know if these things are actually happening in the rankings. I am just here to get your attention. We welcome you to Fantasy Football today. It is preseason week one. I'm Adam Azer with Dave Richard and Heath Cummings. We got running back previews and wide receiver previews coming up this week. Two episodes for each position. But this one, we're going to kind of catch you up on some of the news. Tell you who's moving up and down in the rankings. Heath and Dave, 0 to 10 on the weekendometer. Dave. This was my last weekend where I don't have to do any work, except I'm doing work right now on the weekend. But I don't mind. Being on the podcast is fun. I'm giving it an 8.5. Yeah, I spent about four hours yesterday updating my rankings and projections. So uh, last weekend was the last weekend that I don't have to do any work, I guess. <laughs> but no. <laughs> what a um, I don't say that like it's a bad weekend. thing. One, one, it's 10.0. 10. It's not I, a bad thing, by the way. But just ne- I already know next weekend I'm going to be... Yeah. Well, traveling and then pouring over preseason games and coming up with notes for everybody. And then when the preseason's over, you know what comes next. Real football. Real yeah, football. none of this. None of the stuff where we watch scrubs like Josh Jacobs play. Dude, let, let's honestly have a have a conversation about it. And since you guys didn't ask me about my weekend, it was great. I had French toast on Saturday and French toast on Sunday. Uh, so wow. always a good thing. <laughs> always a good thing. I'm very glad. Once again, Adam, you just dominate us. In the life <laughs> statistic, uh, preseason, of course, I'm going to watch every game while the starters are in. Uh, you know, it's I feel like kind of have to. It's my job, but <laughs> they, you just, you, you just, Dave, don't go, like. Can I please just save you some time? Let's talk about realistically what we can really take away from the preseason because last year, because of the preseason. I enthusiastically drafted Marquez Callaway ahead of Brandon Cooks. So let's. That's your problem. No, you were right there with me. I don't think I was. Did I have Callaway over Cooks? No. Someone might be able no. to look it up. I, but I, I, I like Callaway. I remember liking Callaway not. a lot. You supported my move, Dave, and you did not. Yeah. Um, my point is did you hear what the, the quote Aaron Rodgers had about the preseason? Did you see what he said? Dan Schneier tweeted it. It was really cool. He said, I think he was being asked about Romeo Dubs, and he said, or Dobbs, actually, it's Dobbs, that you can get a lot more from practice during training camp than you can during the preseason because in practice, the defenses are disguising things. They're showing you different things. You have to adjust. You have to mentally be sharp. He said that times have changed since he's been in the league, and in the preseason, everything is so vanilla now. So the only thing you can really take away, this is a little bit of paraphrasing, but the thing that the thing that you might be able to take away from the preseason, according to Aaron Rodgers, is some guys, when the lights come on, they just play better. But he said training camp practices uh, can tell you more than the preseason. And I do think that we need to remember it's not it's hardly ever ones against ones. You're not seeing real defenses and, and their coverages and their schemes and all that. So we got to I, I want to save you some time, Dave. I don't want you to go too crazy this preseason, OK? So you're saying I, I should cancel my trip, not watch any preseason games, no, continue to loaf around to every weekend? I'm going to watch them all. Like I said, you're going to go talk to people. You're going to go interview players. You're going to get some insight. But nobody at this point, I think nobody's should react too strongly to what they see in the preseason, including Josh Jacobs playing in the Hall of Fame game, which we'll talk about in a little bit why that happened. But I don't know, I'm just saying let's, you know, enjoy your enjoy your last few weeks. <laughs> Take it with more than a grain of salt. Yes. Look, last year shaker. It, it was uh, a shaker of salt. Salt, salt. Uh, look, last year was kind of rough. Uh, there were a lot of players I definitely loved coming out of the preseason. Was happy to draft them in the mid to late rounds, and they did not come up. For fantasy they weren't great so maybe you're right maybe that's something we should do 
Um, I think you can, you everybody's know everybody's favorite Cinderella last year was Elijah Mitchell. I believe he had less than ten carries in all the 49ers preseason games. What are you going to look for, Heath, in the preseason? I'm mostly on your side, dude. Um, no, but like, I, what side. matters more to me is like, and it doesn't like the Josh Jacobs thing does not apply here because it's Josh McDaniels, which is an extension of Bill Belichick, and I just can't believe anything. Um, but I, I'd like to see who's playing with who. Right. Sure, Probably that as, helps as much as anything. Um, I'll get excited about a couple of guys that make some big plays, like. We're like one more week away from me moving Isaiah Pacheco in my top 30 or something. <laughs> um, right, but yeah. yeah, I would like to be even more in the direction of the way you were talking. But that's I think not I joked in the middle of the year last year, I might have been a better fantasy analyst if I had not watched any preseason. Well, we didn't feel like we missed anything in 2020 when they had no preseason. <laughs> My dog is freaking out because it's storming here and he's all, all right. over the place. All right. You know what? Let's uh, continue this conversation some other time. Give me one big rankings adjustment that you made over the weekend, Heath Cummings. Let's just do it. Is there anything bigger than number one overall? Not really. I, uh, I moved Christian McCaffrey ahead of Jonathan Taylor. At running back and dave's got a question for me that i don't have an answer to so i'm going to justify it the way i can first and then i want to discuss dave's question but i don't know how to answer it um i just it started with chris towers so you can blame him and i was on fft and five last week and we'd had some talks i think i'd expressed a little bit of reservation about taylor over mccaffrey but then chris asks me like how do things go wrong for jonathan taylor as the number one overall pick. And my answer was, well, Christian McCaffrey stays healthy or Derrick Henry stays healthy or Dalvin Cook stays healthy or Alvin Kamara stays healthy. And then it extended to a tweet a couple of days ago when I went looking at the best running back seasons of the past five seasons and Jonathan Taylor last year, minimum per game, minimum eight games. Um, Jonathan Taylor last year was 12th. Mm -hmm. um, it's right in line with what Adam's been talking about for a while. Like yeah. seven or eight points better per game. Obviously, we know McCaffrey was, but Alvin Kamara's had two seasons on a per game basis better than what Jonathan Taylor did last year. Can I ask um, before you? It's a great point, right? I, I forgot the stat, but he scored the fewest points for a number one running back in PPR in seven years or something like that, and and that's with an extra game. That's the fewest overall points. But how many running backs? Because I don't think we think Kamara has the same upside that he used to have. Um, how many running backs have the potential to score, let's say, three more fantasy points per game than best case scenario, Jonathan Taylor? Oh, three more? Well, I how don't many do you want to make? Two um, more? Do we think last year? What's that? How many more do you want to make it? Two more points? Well, I just think it's the. It's not. I I am generally, unless it's someone like Will Fuller or Rashad Penny pretty injury agnostic and i think running back is the most injury prone position and so it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to take a guy who i think maybe has the fourth or fifth highest upside number one overall just when i know he's going to get 300 touches at the running back position because i think he's less likely to get hurt than those other guys so who has more upside than jonathan taylor other than mccaffrey um i think derrick henry does I yeah. think I think in full PP, like if Alvin Kamara gets his workload from last year and his efficiency bounces back, then he definitely does. Okay. Anyone else? I think it's questionable with Dalvin Cook. Okay. I think it's possible with Dalvin. I think it's I think it's questionable with Austin Eckler, but probably Taylor has more than Eckler, but they're very close. Dave, what's the question you want to ask Keith as he has moved Christian McCaffrey ahead of Jonathan Taylor? This is something that I've kind of battled with, and I think I've got an answer as for, for my own question, but I want to know what Heath's answer is. I want people who are ready to take Christian McCaffrey number one overall to answer this question too. How many games does he have to play in order to justify going with the 101? Um, so, so for justify example, going with the 101. For example, if he plays 17, no question about it. He's, he's absolutely right. worth it. Play 16, no question about it. 15, 14. No I question it, about it. Does it get sticky when we get to 13? 
I think it part, I mean, partially we can't ever know this, but partially it depends on whether he suffers a season ending injury or misses a month in the middle of the year. Cause right. if you told well, me if he, he played se- 10 or 11 games, but he was there weeks 15 through 17, then I think mm-hmm. he was probably worth it if he's his normal self. Mm-hmm. Sure. But what if he plays but if th- these 11 games. games and he misses the fantasy playoffs, then he wasn't worth it. Even though he probably helped you get to the fantasy playoffs? I would say that. But I don't, again, I think I said I don't know how to answer it. Right, because you don't know when the games he misses are going to be. And, and then you, could actually, you could actually apply this question to any running back. And it's I don't know just a I don't know what question. kind of year it's going to be at running back. If it's a year like last year where nobody scores more than 22 points per game, then maybe 10 games of him at 30 points per game is worth it. All right, so hold, let me ask you this. I'm telling you Christian McCaffrey is going to play 14 games. I don't know which games it will be. He's going to play 14 games, and I'm not telling you anything about any other player. But McCaffrey's going to miss three games. But, I'm, but you're, he, guaranteeing, you're guaranteeing 14 games. Guaranteeing you 14 games. And you're not guaranteeing how effective he'll be, how many no. touches he'll get. Number Nothing one overall, like no question. No. I, th- I agree with Heath. Number one. Okay, yep. 12 games. This is where I get a little nervous. <laughs> this is the number. It might be. It still could be, yeah. If if, okay. it, if McCaffrey is McCaffrey and you get 12 games of McCaffrey, it's probably worth it. I think you're, 11. You're the number I said zero games was of Jonathan Taylor in this scenario, correct? I'm guaranteeing zero, yeah. Okay. We can't because you can't act right. Obviously, we don't know that the other guys. Are. Um. Okay. Last Keith, question. That was your thunder, right? That was in uh, your house. Holy Jeez. cow! That was thunder. That was. You, you haven't been hearing it outside of my house. Ah. Uh, lives ten minutes uh, north of me. DC's yeah. outside. Yeah, here it is. Did, my goodness. Uh, so yeah, anyway, no wonder why my dog's about to crap all over the house. <laughs> Last question. We got to move on. We got a lot to cover today. Notice I said crap, Adam, and not curse word. Thank like you. you. Yeah. Uh, last question for on this. Is this just in full PPR, Heath? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because in case anyone's curious, right. Christian McCaffrey in his heyday, 2019, 22.1 fantasy points per game in non-PPR, 22.1. Last year, Jonathan Taylor, 19.8. I mean, that's in, it's incredible. Two point Running back scoring's been down the last couple of years. And then the next year, he only played three games. He averaged 24.5 points per game in non-PPR. All right, Dave, what's the biggest ranking adjustment you made? Julio Jones, because I ranked him. Who? No, who, I, Julio? The big, I, I, I didn't make any rankings changes. Uh, I made one rankings change this weekend. Do you want it for all of training camp so far or just this weekend? Yeah, yeah, the, the, whatever. whatever. Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas has moved up for me. There have been a lot of prominent fantasy players that have started training camp on the pup list, and a lot of them have come off. A couple of surprises that actually never made it on. Michael Thomas was on the pup list for a day. Uh, the video highlights out of New Orleans for like the first five, six days of camp were fine. He has assimilated into team drills. That's 11 on 11 drills. That, those are the most intense training camp drills that you can get. Every single report that I've seen out of New Orleans says that Michael Thomas looks like the Michael Thomas of old. And I still expect there to be a target dip for him compared to where he was in 2019 and 2018. But I still think he's going to be. I think he's going to be worth top 15, if not top 12 in full PPR. Top 30 pick in I, fantasy draft. I moved him up as well, but just inside my top 20 wide receivers, not quite that high, but I'm I'm, I'm tailing Dave. You guys are they all have him. You, Jamie, and Heath all have him in the top 18. That's where I saw Heath has him. Dave, I think, has him 13th, Jamie 15th, and Heath 18th. This is Michael Thomas we're talking about. I'll Heath give you the Thomas. exact number right now. It's, it's just, 13. Yeah. Um, Michael Tom. Oh, oh, you were confirming because I, right. Okay. Thank you. Michael I wasn't Thomas, sure if it was 12 or 13. I felt like we needed to get it out there since August 1st. All right. August 1st. It's August 7th right now. That's 49 drafts on NFC. He is wide receiver 32. Oh, so, Lordy. No. Yeah. You guys are, are way ahead. Well, that's a, I mean, I had him like 26 or 27. So I guess I was already at, I, I, so I moved him up like eight spots. Makes no. me want to go draft a couple of NFC teams. We have to promote some things. Tuesday night is a live stream, 8 p.m. Eastern. It is not just any live stream. It is a salary cap live stream. And it's not just a salary cap live stream. It is an all-star mock salary cap live stream. 
Yeah, we got we great got, guests from around the industry. Mm-hmm. Yep. We've got Drew Davenport from Football Guys, Marcus Grant from the NFL, Joe Dolan from Fantasy Points, Jacob Gibbs from Sportsline, Adam Azer is hosting it and not participating in it. All your favorite CBS guys will be in there. Uh, it's 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 a it's a bunch, and everybody will not not everybody, but all the non CBS people will be in the stream at some point. And there's going to be a lot of wisdom being shared, a lot of salary cap strategy being shared. Hi, it, it is a must watch if you're at a auction slash salary cap draft. Yeah, it's going to be and awesome. Mark off a couple hours. Yeah, it's going to not be, be a normal stream. Mega I don't stream. know that we're going to do the whole thing. It's a mega not stream. Fair. Because uh, that's ten thirty, eleven p.m. Four hours. What's that? It could take what three to four hours. No, I think two and a half to three. All right. I'm gonna ballpark it at two and a half. All right, we might be able to pull that off. So uh, we've got some big news for you. Also, join our Facebook group. Facebook, uh, just search for Fantasy Football Today on Facebook. It used to be called the Facebook. Now it's just Facebook. So join the Facebook group. Anyway, the big news: Kareem Hunt requested a trade. One thing that I found very interesting that probably won't matter because they're not going to give him a trade is when well, Chris Hunt that. or Nick Chubb was out last year, they had a basically single back system. You know, you know when they're both healthy, they're both getting work. But when one of them was out last year, which was most of the games, something like 11 games, they didn't work the Ernest Johnson. And I counted only two games all year where Chubb or Hunt missed a game, but the other one played and a second running back in more than five carries. Two games. One of them was week 18 when Nick Chubb left early or barely played. Uh, so that was interesting. If Kareem Hunt did not play, then maybe you would just see a bigger workload than, than ever from Nick Chubb. Uh, but, guys, I don't really know how to react to this. Uh, you know, Keith, you and I have been very pro Kareem Hunt in you know round seven or so. You still feel good about him or no? Um, it has nothing to do with the trade request because he returned to the team portion of practice today. His hold in lasted all of like one and a half days. Um, so I don't think there's any chance they're going to trade him, but I did finally update my projections and just gave it, gave up on Deshaun Watson. And so I've got 17 games of Jacoby Brissett projected now, and I do not like Kareem Hunt or anyone on the Browns as much as I did. You still like him in round seven? Nah. it's right about where I have him. So I don't feel like I'm getting a deal anymore. I'm just afraid they're not going to score near as many touchdowns. Uh, Mike Evans is day-to-day with a hamstring injury. He, so that ended up being not a big deal, it seems. And great to see Matthew Stafford out there. He had a good practice. I believe it was on, it was on Friday. Threw the ball well. Seems like good stuff. I don't know if you guys are aware of the way Jamie's Flex League started. Did you, you know who his no. first two picks were? No. So Jamie did something called the Flex Draft, which is industry analysts. Um, they, you know, I'm in the he's best. He's defending ball. champion. Jamie won yeah. it last year. I yeah, didn't he's realize. got the belt. Well, he can keep it because he drafted eighth, and he has Cooper Cup eighth overall. And guess who his second round pick was? It's going to be something ridiculous. Overall, like whatever, Derek Henry, Travis Kelsey, Najee Harris. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He started out with Cup and Najee Harris. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. So um, yeah, Cup fell to eight to him, and I, I guess we're just we're just encouraged by the Stafford news. Or are we we cool with that? Yeah, it probably means we got to rebound Stafford in the rankings a little bit because when the news hit, uh, I don't know if Heath pulled him down, but I, I know I did, and I know Jamie did because you you hear about a quarterback practicing a little, but having some sort of abnormal problem with his arm makes you not as excited. Uh, if you do end up waiting on quarterback in your draft, I bet Stafford still slips. I bet this news, and this is one of the other things to to keep in mind during the preseason, is that there's going to be a lot of highlights where players do well, and like Marquez Galloway, and you're going to see them go higher up draft boards, and maybe you fade those guys. You fade the highlight guys from the preseason, and you also take advantage of the players that have bad news. And Stafford might be one of those bad news players oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that you just draft way late, and then he goes off for 28 fantasy points week one against Buffalo. Heath, who won that Twitter poll? Um, Justin Jefferson won the Twitter poll 50 to 35 or 50 to 40. Yeah, it was who's gonna who's the number one wide receiver now? I, so I'm not quite as 
um, soothed. I wouldn't get the impression this was a short-term problem that's just over now. I think it's still sure. a, a, they a minor it. risk yeah. or an irritant. Can I say one other thing on Kareem Hunt? Hmm. I'll allow it. Where There's only one team I can think of where he could go, and his va- fantasy value would like drastically improve, and it's Atlanta. I think if the Falcons were to acquire him, I think they'd install him as their oh. starting running back right away. I think... There's a, um, I mean, Kansas City. I thought about Kansas City too, but I don't know if they'd install him as the lead guy right away. Hey, Kansas City is not taking back three months. He's sh- he's sh- he's so much better than everybody they have. He is. Um, the, the Eagles, they hate Miles Sanders. I that would. Know. I think it would be a mess. I think the Texans. I think that would still be a mess. Plus, it's the Texans. And I think again. I, I think Kareem Hunt's one of the probably eight or ten best running backs in football. So I think on almost any team, he would just push the other guy into a thirty-five percent rule. Okay, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, rankings risers and fallers, or just camp risers and fallers, even if they're not exactly moving up in the rankings. I know a lot of people have questions about Romeo Dobbs, Isaiah Pacheco. We'll see what Dave and Heath are doing about those guys. We'll be right back on fantasy football today. Welcome back on a Sunday evening episode here. Hope everybody had an awesome weekend. We thank you so much for tuning in. You're going to get a lot more content in our channel than you're going to get in any other fantasy football channel. I say that with very limited knowledge of what's available in the other channels. But (laughs) you are going to get an episode every single day in here. Uh, No days off for us. So, uh, (laughs) you know, I I feel good about that. Also, I'm very excited about Tuesday when we're going to unveil our new Schrager on you, our new producer, to help out with this show and make it even better. And it is going to be even better. We're talking about, I already got him making ADP graphics. So it's going to be a better visual experience for you on YouTube. Hopefully, it's going to be a better audio experience for you listening to the, to the podcast. Um, big things coming here on Fantasy Football today. Please help us grow with a five star review or tell your friends, or whatever it is. So, Dave, any other. Risers for you. I moved Jalen Hurts up a notch. Okay, that, that's next. the move I made today. I'm he's still not as high as where Heath has him or where Jamie has him, but moved him out of Russell Wilson. I figure that the the floor for him is still pretty good, and I, I just all the reports I've read on Minshew just suggest that there's no way Jalen Hurts is going to get benched. If there's anything to fear, it's that they, it's that Hurts struggles as a passer in the first half of the year and they do what they did last year and just focus on running. That would stink because Hertz averaged like 16 fantasy points per game when that was happening. But maybe he's got more leash this time because they made the commitment to AJ Brown and maybe he'll be a little bit better as a passer than he was last year because he's got AJ Brown on top of everything else. So I'm, uh, I'm buying in a little bit more, a little bit more. He's a top 70 player for me. Still not going to get him in any of our drafts because Ethan Jamie will beat me to the punch, but a uh, little less to fear about Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is on Fantasy Pros QB7. He is going That's where 60, I got him. 68th overall, so that is the sixth round. That's almost the- exactly where I have him. In, yeah. And uh, on NFC since August 1st, Jalen Hurts is QB7, but he's going 82nd overall. Okay. So, um, Heath, how about you? Risers? I have so many risers, Adam. Good, good, good. Lots and lots of risers. Um, Brees Hall. I thought he was a spectacular prospect before the draft. The Jets took him. I was a little worried about the split with Michael Carter. Before they even got to training camp, there was talk about how Michael Carter was going to be Robin to his Batman. Like, it was very clear that he was the lead guy. And then the news about Hall has just been fantastic, and you've heard very, very little about Michael Carter. I think this is a, like, almost all running backs are in committees, but I think Brees Hall is getting a bigger share of the work than Javante Williams is. He might get a bigger share of the work than DeAndre Swift does. So I'm not going to hold him back from those guys anymore. I'm behind those guys just slightly because other reasons, but he's RB14 now, right in the same tier as those two. What round are you taking him in? Uh, Round three, early, early round three. Okay, I'm in late round three on him because I'm still worried about the committee factor. But I, I've read and heard that he looks fine, 
And uh, that that's another that's an example of a player where if he if he breaks off a couple of nice runs in the preseason, everyone's going to go bananas. And he probably and he'll end up being a late round two guy. This is Brees Hall we're talking about here. I'd like to just self promote a little bit, pay pay some uh, attention to this tweet I sent out. Um, the New York Jets have running backs named Michael Carter and Brees Hall. The New York Jets have cornerbacks named Michael Carter and Bryce Hall. Isn't that weird? It's a little strange. They have two Michael Carters. They have a Brees Hall and they have a Bryce Hall. So if I start sending you tweets that I made that I thought were clever before the show, can you just have them ready to do 100%. this? A hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you figured out that thing, how you could show the screen and then have the three of us in the bottom. Like That's really neat. Yeah, I know. Are you taking credit for that? I'm just saying I'm, I'm glad you figured it out. I don't know where you got the idea from. It was your idea to put us on the bottom, but I didn't know, and you didn't know that it was even possible. I'm the one who figured out that it was possible. <laughs> so I get at least some of that credit. Uh, um, all right, so Brees Hall, who else? Who else? Yes, uh, small bumps up in the um, high-end flexes. Chase Edmonds, uh, it sounds really a lot. Like I don't think he's going to be a lead rusher necessarily, although he might be. But it's, I think he's the guy who's going to definitely lead that t running back group in touches, and he's going to get the most valuable ones. A.J. Dillon, um, Damian Pierce, every day it seems like someone's saying how much better he looks than all the other Texans running backs. Yeah. So he's into the top 30 now at running back. Wow. Um, that might be it for running backs. Pierce has moved up for me, but I still think he's closer to 100th overall. I don't know where yeah. you have him overall. Top, I, I have a hard time conceptually who's rb30 you know who who is in that range? tony pollard oh wow so that's pretty big that's devin singletary okay well, well for, for Ch David. chase edmonds is rb30 for me uh, chase edmonds is rb24 cordell patterson cordell patterson might be in that rb30 range okay look so he's in the that rb30 of, range so you're saying damian pierce is ahead of clyde edwards elaire I have Clyde two oh. spots ahead of Damian Pierce. Yeah, I've got I've got a lot of guys ahead of Damian Pierce, including Clyde, Clyde and Miles Sanders are the two guys right ahead of Pierce. Wow. Okay, yeah, Dave has Oof. Clyde thirty five, and you have him twenty seven. Uh, so, so Damian, you have Pierce, no Chiefs running backs in your top thirty four running backs. Dave. None. This is a Patrick Mahomes joint now. You have uh, Damian Pierce ahead of the Seahawks running backs. Yes, I do not. Yeah, sorry, I was talking to Heath. You don't, Dave. No. All right, so let's talk about that then. Damian Pierce, Heath, why, or Dave, why are you not quite as high on Damian Pierce? A lot of it has to do with the team that he's on, and I fully expect Houston to also use multiple running backs over the course of the season. I know their head coach didn't necessarily do that the last time he was a head coach in Tampa and the time before that when he was in Chicago, but their general manager comes from New England, and I think that they're trying to have a good stable of running backs to rotate around, and if Damian Pierce earns a, a you know a bigger share, I'm sure they'll give it to him. And I I love the reports on him. I think he's absolutely worth drafting, but I think he's more of a mid round guy. I don't see myself um, trying to make him my RB three. And I think even like a, a couple of good showings in the preseason, I don't think that that's going to necessarily change it either. What would change it is if the 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 players that he's competing with for reps get hurt or get cut. You know, Marlon Mack is his top competition. There have been decent reports on Mack. Rex Burkhead is still there. We know how he caught fire at the end of last year. I'm not saying that these guys are going to just completely, you know, sideswipe Damian Pierce and force him into 10 touches a game. I would bet on the upside of Pierce compared to those guys, and I am. They're way ahead of him, uh, or he's way ahead of them in my rankings. But it's the Texans' run game. It's an offense that I think – can can support one great receiver, which is why I really like Brandon Cooks. But otherwise, I, I feel like he's he's somebody that I don't mind speculating with as a bench receiver and not somebody who could be a potential flex for me, even in non-PPR. I just don't think it's fair to argue against him by saying he's going to have to share touches when I've got him at RB20. It's not like there's workhorse backs in the RB29 range that he's being ranked against. No, it's a bunch of part-time running backs. Too. But there's downside with him too. How many touchdowns are the Texans running backs going to have? How much? How, where will the Texans' offense be in scoring? The reason why we love Brandon Cooks is because we think he's going to just get tons of targets. Yeah. Is uh, is who's going to be on on passing downs? Damian Pierce did have a decent amount of catches in college. 
He's good at it. He also never had more than 15 carries in a game. He only had one game with more than 13 carries. Yes. He hasn't been a workhorse yet, uh, but he does not really look like your typical third down back. Um, you know, he had nine catches true. last year. That's it's not funny. He's got the he's got the body of a workhorse running back and the the profile of a third down back. <laughs> but um, and maybe those two things can go together. It? What do you mean by the profile of a third down? I mean, he's, he's got the profile that would give you hope he could play on third downs in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He, he has the past, got some passes. He's pretty good at it. Yeah, he is. I agree. In the past, Heath, you've noticed other running backs that split in college, and you've used that as a point against them yeah, when they make it to I, the but NFL. I'm generally using it against guys that were push, pushing into the top 15 discussion. <laughs> Like I was using it to say, I'm not sure Josh Jacobs should be a top 12 running back as a rookie. He's never, right. I'm not, sure. I don't expect it's, Damian, you're right. if, if Damian That's Pierce fair. is a workhorse back, then he should be in the top 20. And Josh Jacobs is a good, actually counter to what I said. You know, he's ne- he never had more than 15 carries in a game is what I said about Damian Pierce. Only one game with more than 13. Josh Jacobs had one game in his college career with more than 16 carries. He had three games with more than 12 carries. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the first week of his career, he may have had 18 carries in the NFL. So he's been more or less a workhorse. I mean, you love the workload, right? So it does, just because he didn't do it in college, it doesn't mean you can't do it in the pros. But Damian Pierce hasn't, hasn't been that. But there's right. only Again, like there's only the Seattle guys, and I'm not even sure that's true if they're both healthy, but there's only the Seattle guys that I think are guaranteed when the other one gets hurt more than 15 carries a game. 23 think. carries in week one of his career for Josh Jacobs. Uh, so you, so Damian Pierce is, is clearly ahead of Tyler Algier because we were drafting them similarly. Um, they were not far apart, especially in non PPR. I had Pierce always ahead and I have moved. They've separated. Okay. Any other risers you guys want to talk about? Well, that was just my running backs. <laughs> Keep going. Let's talk, Romeo, let's, well, no, let's talk about Isaiah Pacheco and Romeo Dobbs. I'm really, um, still only looking for those guys on dynasty waiver wires um, or deeper than 15 round drafts at this point. Dobbs I do have Dobbs and Watson equal, but I just don't want to draft either one. I wish his last name was pronounced Dubs. It's more fun. Yeah. It's also what I'm used to. I'm, best. I'm definitely going to call him Dubs a few more times. He's going to get drafted and redraft. Yeah. Probably. There's, he'll be a late round pick. It's going to be Brown. 12 but R- little romeo is definitely gonna make the cut people are gonna take him start the season with and him we might be bench. one week away from pacheco getting like it sounds like the whole ronald jones thing just is not happening at all so far so what's the impact here for alan lazard and clyde edwards alaire nothing for alan lazard so far it's not really anything that i would be worried about okay i i thought clyde was going to share with ronald jones i've dropped Ronald Jones way down um, because I don't think he's necessarily even going to make the team. He might. Yeah, I've heard that. But let's uh, give me a couple more risers and then we'll do rankings fallers. Um, Chris Godwin. I didn't get him quite back to where I had him, but he's uh, at the very, like where I would have him without any injury concerns, but he's back up to wide receiver 12 for me now. Um, but like I said, if he had no injury concerns at all, he might be in my top five. Boy, that feels so risky though, because he's not, he's not really doing that much in camp yet. And what's wide receiver 12. We're talking about ahead of Michael Pittman and Michael Pittman, Mike Evans, AJ Brown. Yeah. Hmm. But I'm a little bit more worried about Brown which is weird, so like hurts so much, but I think it's just because I'd like Goddard and maybe Devonta Smith a little more. Um, mm-hmm. But like Michael Thomas is 18. I think Dave's got Michael Thomas 13. I can't, I don't know if there's a lot of difference between the two. I know whichever wide receiver I draft in round three, if I draft one, I'm going to feel nervous about it. <laughs> Unless yeah. Yeah, we did the pick by pick last Monday and I ended up with Debo Samuel in round three with the second pick of round three and I was thrilled but if it's aj brown chris godwin michael pittman i don't think i'm gonna take brandon cooks in round three i know you guys probably would i'm gonna feel a little nervous about it but then i thought about it and i said well what running back would i take there that i wouldn't feel nervous about 
I'd feel nervous about Montgomery. I'd feel nervous about Zeke. That's just a nerve-wracking round, round three, because it still feels so early in the draft. You feel like you have to hit a home run. You don't, by the way. But, but yeah, I mean, there's just going to be question marks about just about everyone there. Uh, uh, a couple I'm sort of gravitating to T. Higgins, because I just feel like I, I, know, I know what, yeah, I feel like, and Pittman is too. But I well, feel like Pittman he, could be amazing. I still like Higgins over Pittman. I, you guys don't, right? You like Pittman? Mm-hmm. No, I like Pittman. Pittman. I like Pittman's the number two. one, and I like Jay Moore a lot too. But what the hell? Just stop with the charade. And I truly believe that 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 Sam Darnold has a chance to be the starter. I don't think it'll happen. No. But, but then why wait that long? You're doing your team a huge. I think because they have guys in that locker room who are Sam Darnold guys. I just, Ooh, I don't know if that's well. I mean, definitely they have one for sure. You who tra- Robbie They're number two wide receiver. <laughs> it's like his best friend. You trade for Baker Mayfield, pretty close to the start of training camp. He needs all the reps he can get. This is quarterback we're talking here, and they said they're going to take it until the uh, the second preseason game. I think August nineteenth, the Patriots game. That still gives him like three weeks of practice after that. There's plenty of time. I yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be worried about it but i would assume that it's going to be baker um you just want a couple more that we yeah, yeah. Can just gloss over but uh um, i got i got another name too but go ahead good, let's go. see if you name him no, no i want go. to know if you name him. okay um a little lower down juju was up just a little bit and sky more they're getting most of the positive buzz with the chiefs mm-hmm. and kind of emerging there um alan lazard i caught up with you on adam and got him to the end of uh, or early round eight um little boost for Kadarius tony and um brandon Ayuk. That's Man, the one. so much Brandon Ayuk steam. Yes. Yeah. Um, now I, I think it's it feels like nobody says this sentence, but hasn't everything that Brandon Ayuk has done in camp been without Debo Samuel? No, or most of it. No, most he's of it. Still, more he's than still, half of it. Most of it, yes. But now that Debo's back, they've both been making plays. What what I've been noticing because I'm reading up on the Niners every day. Uh, Lance has not been great. It's a combination of offensive line still trying to figure its way. I think they've been using a couple of rookies on the line with the ones. And the defense apparently has been really impressive. And I think yeah. those two factors have been impacting Lance. Good defense. Playing without, yeah, they're my number two DST. Um, playing without Debo definitely affected Lance. And drops. A lot of the receivers have been making drops that have that have hurt Trey Lance. Same thing's been happening to Hertz, by the way. So everybody's kind of in in that training camp mode. Mistakes are going to be made, um, but I the, the buzz on Lance isn't. Oh my God, he's just throttling the defense every day in practice. He's looking amazing. Uh, it's been up and down with Trey Lance, but I mean Shanahan was really glowing about IU, talking about how he's clearly. Worked out the right way during the offseason and worked out with Lance during the offseason. Uh, he's running his routes differently. He's running a little more violently. Um, he's, he's he's making plays further downfield. He's not running th- the same routes that he you know specialized in in college. He's expanding a little bit more. These are some things that I wouldn't mind looking at during the preseason when Ayuk plays, if Ayuk plays. Yeah, he had better receiving stats than Debo Samuel in the second half of the year. Uh, Debo, of course, was doing so much in the in the run game, but mm-hmm. Ayuk was their best receiver. So uh, that's not really – statistically, he was their more prolific receiver. I don't think I could say he was their best receiver, but you know, I think everybody knows what I mean. Sure. Um, would you take Ayuk or Kadarius Tony? Ayuk. I think I'd take Tony. A little more – I think there's more upside for target volume with Tony. Would you take Wait. Lazard or Juju Smith Schuster? I'm not. I haven't moved Juju. I'm sorry. I've got Tony ahead of Ayuk. I was wrong. Okay. Uh, I'll take Lazard or Juju because I'm still sure. a little worried about the targets for Juju. All right. Let's talk about rankings fallers here, Dave. Who are some potential fallers, current fallers, past fallers, whatever? Uh, the one name that has been falling for me has been Jahan Dotson, who got off to a great oh. start in camp. He had a great and week. I, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I love the talent, but Wentz apparently is not having a good camp. The Athletic wrote about how he's been struggling in, like, one-on-one drills against air. So maybe maybe he's working things out and he'll be better. Um, the fact that he's never had a receiver finish higher than 23rd in PPR points per game in his career 
that kind of spooked me. And I don't think it's going to be Dotson who finishes that high. If one finishes that high in Washington, I think it'll be McLaurin. So if I'm drafting Dotson, why am I doing it? Is he a bench receiver for me? Am I ever going to actually use him? Will he be good on a consistent basis or will he have, you know, one smash week followed by four bad weeks? So I kind of got the, I got cold feet on Dotson. Okay. Put some socks on, bro. Heath, any followers for you? Um, yeah, mostly just some running back adjustments. Um, I don't, I've caved a little bit on the David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert thing. So I moved Montgomery down and Herbert up a little bit. I still have Montgomery RB 15, so I'll probably still be the highest on him. Jamie um, drafted him in the flex league in round, round four. Excellent. Good. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, both the Browns running backs, I dropped a little bit because of the Brissett projection of the offense. Um, All right, so with, uh, where's Chubb? 16. RB so 16. Just, be, just behind Montgomery. Yep. How about in non or half PPR? Are you taking Chubb over Montgomery? Uh, non for sure, yes. I mean, this is an interesting topic here. I'm sorry to, you know, I know you want to get on to some other players, but uh, does it really matter? Why Why do they drop? Because you, you figure the offense is definitely going to be worse. It could be bad. But, I mean, I'm looking at, this is off the top of my head because I remember doing this research, three games that Baker Mayfield missed last year. And they had Case Keenum and they had someone else. And those quarterbacks did not throw for 200 yards in any of those three games. The most was 199 yards. So, you know, bad passing performances. They ran the ball so much. And they ran the ball pretty well for two of those three games. And remember, one of those was the Thursday night game against the depleted Broncos, but it was uh, the Ernest Johnson. Mm -hmm. Um, I almost feel like Chubb and Hunt are just going to be the focal points of the offense. And they're still going to be really good. Well, I increased their volume, um, but I just – and it's less about those three games and more about, like, it's the same reason that people would argue against David Montgomery. Um, he's on a terrible offense. It's the same – like, we argue – we make that argument against running backs all the time. And they are it's going to be different. in a – 55 45 split and i think the browns are going to be one of the bottom 10 offenses in the nfl yeah but that's okay if there's there, as long as they're not terrible uh, christian mccaffrey was the number one running back on the christian 24th. mccaffrey was not sharing with cream hunt or yeah, nick but I'm, chubb. Not drafting, I'm not drafting nick chubb in the first round i'm just saying have things really changed is there all right here's the question is their offense with jacoby Brissett for 17 games is their offense going to be worse than it was last year when they had really bad quarterback play for basically the entire year because Baker Mayfield got hurt in week two. I would, let's just see. I wonder if I project their offense to be worse than it was last year. I, my initial thought is yes, it's going to be worse than it was last year. Okay. But I will, uh, I'll try yeah, to look at the, now. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, Dave, uh, talk to me about your shirt. It says sweet 16 on it. I cannot tell what it's for. Oh, it just looked like a different color green. It was because it was, you know, New Orleans themed last year, the whole tournament, because the final four was in New Orleans. So a little more purple and dark green, and some yellow. Uh, somebody wants to know, Adam Lee wants to know if Cam Akers is falling. Not for me because he already fell. Yeah, you were the low guy. Um, now I don't know if I'm the only low so guy. So I've got them for basically, it looks like 250 fewer yards and two fewer touchdowns than they had last year. Okay. So now I don't know how many games Chubb and Hunt played together last year, where, where uh, they actually ranked when they did, because it's like five games. But, it was um, the first five games, and they both were elite. They both, and Hunt was actually better because he had some catches, but and he scored a lot of touchdowns. First five games Well, the first season, five games, they were pretty good, right? Because Baker Mayfield hadn't got hurt yet? No, Mayfield got hurt in week two. Was it two? Yep. He tore his left shoulder, his non-throwing shoulder in week two. In week one, he threw for 315 yards, which is why I like Baker Mayfield. Uh, you know, he right. got a, in week one, he picked up where he left off the year before. I, I like him in Superflex. Uh, Akers is 22 for Heath, 27 for Dave, 20 for Jamie. Uh, it, it, Antonio Gibson, Josh Jacobs, Cam Akers. Who's your favorite? Gibson. Gibson, but I change that answer every week. So, do you want to give me one more faller? 
uh, besides Amari Cooper. Uh, no, Amari Cooper might be the only other one. I didn't move as many guys down. Okay. And he's outside uh, have, my wide receiver 40, so. I have a list of some players who, according to what I've been reading, have been having a good camp. I just want to run through them, and I just want real quick reactions here, guys. Mm-hmm. Saquon Barkley, he's having a very good camp. Uh, 24th overall right now, he's RB14. Saquon Barkley. He's, I've seen the same reports. I'm starting to get the feeling the Giants offense will run quite a bit through him and that he'll get a lot of passes. He got the same kind of concerns with him that you do with Christian McCaffrey because he's been so, you know, injured, missed a lot of time the last two seasons. Uh, the, the freak accident last year might be a little bit easier to dismiss with him compared to the other injuries he's had in the past. Because like he stepped on a foot, twisted his ankle, and then he was gone for a while. I, uh, I could see him having a good year. I could see him having a good just year. Tell me ADP, 24th overall for Barkley. Too high, too low, or is the porridge just I, right? I, just right. Yeah. Okay. What about starting your team with Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley? Whoa. Would that be fun or what? <laughs> it, it might yeah, be. It'll or, be something. You might be done playing fantasy football week four. <laughs> One of the two. I did th- I did that two years ago. I had the, both those guys on a on a auction draft that I did with other in the Kings Classic. Speaking of expert leagues, those two were my running backs. I walked out of that draft, chest out to here. I was, yeah, I'm going to crush this league. And uh, I, I did not do well. I did not make the playoffs. I don't think. Uh, Baltimore wide receiver, James Prochet. Looks like he's winning the slot job. Does it matter for Andrews or Bateman? No. I don't think it matters enough but going back to the theory that if they have a hard time running the football this year they're they, they clearly are okay throwing it more than 50 percent of the time good for lamar good for all the pass catchers i don't think brochet is worth drafting unless you're in a super deep league or a dynasty league at this point having a good camp san francisco running back elijah mitchell rb 22 49 yeah. overall Every time I read about him having a good camp, I, I also read about how there's two other running backs in San Francisco having a good camp. I've read a lot about Trey Sermon, who's kind of changing it up and working more in like passing situations, and he's improved there. You know the deal in San Francisco. Oh, you don't. I yeah, don't you know do. No, I don't know the deal. We don't deal. need to do this again. Yeah. I, I mean, I know it's going to be a committee, but I, what I don't know is – is it going to be uh, the rookie, Tyrion Davis-Price, spelling him at the goal line, which is something that was... Spe- I don't it's, know if it's going to be that. They call them a no, short I'm period. sorry. I think when we say, you know the deal in San Francisco, that's implying that we don't know anything. <laughs> okay. No, it's implying that there's been a different running back who's led the team in rushes each of the last five seasons. Yeah, I hate this argument. I really do. It's because that has been entirely because of injuries. What about my I argument? That's their okay, well, here's a guy that had six different injuries last year in Elijah Mitchell. Yeah, I know. They're going to. Uh, okay. But he's obviously the, the top guy. What's the ADP? 49th overall, tw- RB22. Feels, and we draft him. Feels a little rich. Uh, Indianapolis wide receiver Paris Campbell having a good camp. Hmm. Love okay. the talent. He's never been able to stay on the field. He Giants makes Christian McCaffrey Daniel look Bellinger. like an Iron Man. Giants tight end Daniel Bellinger. Dynasty guy. Maybe. Yeah. If you yeah. have a practice squad. Okay. And having a bad camp. I only have one name here, and it's Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. <laughs> It's really should be noted. It seems like he's struggling quite a bit. Mm. And Shire maybe that Giants defense practice. is just so good. Oh, yeah, so good, right? Uh, Giant uh, Schneier was at Giants practice over the weekend and tweeted about Daniel Jones just missing. And that's just so sad. Yeah. The more news and notes. Why did Josh Jacobs play in the first half of the hall of the first quarter of the Hall of Fame game? Josh McDaniels said he played uh, Jacobs because it's good for running backs to take contact, get hit, get tackled in the preseason. Doesn't really happen that much at training camp. So. That's why I wanted to get, get Josh Jacobs out mm-hmm. there. Uh, J- uh, Jamar Chase could play more in the slot this year. He lined up in the slot for just 14% of his snaps last year. That's Jamar Chase. Smart. According to Ian Rappaport, Odell Beckham not expected to be ready until the second half of the season. Baltimore center Tyler Linderbaum will miss at least a week with a leg injury. He's their first-round pick. And Rashad Bateman has a minor injury. Keith alluded to this earlier. Khalil Herbert had some first-team work. So it just he's not going to be the lead running back, but he could be a headache a little bit for David Montgomery. 
You know how people like to draft Alexander Madison when they get Dalvin Cook? Yes. I think it's a good idea if you end up getting Montgomery. Go ahead and write down Khalil Herbert round 10 no matter what on a post-it note. And Chicago wide receiver Nikhil Harry suffered a serious injury. It's a high ankle sprain. So yeah, that's, that's his season. We, <laughs> that's becoming like among the worst injuries that players can have because they come back from it and they struggle coming back from it. And not only were they thin at wide receiver before camp, you know, they keep mm-hmm. getting thinner. That's the Bears. All right. Uh, I guys sent you something. We can skip this if you want. I looked at the last five years to try to determine what where was a bigger gap. Was it the gap between RB12 and RB18 or wide receiver 12 and wide receiver 18? Did you have a chance to look at any of this? I did. No. Hmm. Did, Dave? Not at all. I did. I thought it was interesting. It was a little bit interesting. I was trying to decide, you know, is it more important to have a top 12 running back or the you know, number 12 running back? Then wide receiver, because is there a bigger gap between 12 and 18 at running back or 12 and 18 at wide receiver? And looking at the last five years in all three formats, non-half and full PPR, the answer is probably running back. I wish it were a little bit more clear, but also when the answer was running back, it was a bigger gap than when the answer was wide receiver. Uh, I guess basically, Dave, it doesn't really seem to be a big difference between wide receiver 12 and wide receiver 18, typically. I remember there being like a three-point difference between wide receiver 12 and wide receiver 36 one of the previous years. You know, sometimes Heath will mention his projections and he'll say that a a player is a tenth of a point off of another player or 1.4 points off of another player. And you might have heard him say that and say to yourself, man, how could it be like that? That's that's too close. But that's kind of how it is. And there's just this big, big group of wide receivers. It feels like every year. I've said it before. The difference between like a number two receiver and a number three receiver, it's almost nothing. And that's why the position's so deep. That's why I make the choice in plenty of our drafts to wait on taking wide receiver because I think I can find one um, several rounds later than where the 24th receiver is off the board who can perform close to the level of that type of receiver that goes to 24th. So I'm trying to think of a way to make this a better comparison because wide receiver 12 and running back 12 are not being drafted at the same place. The co- the draft cost is not the same at all. It's true. It's probably about a round difference. Um, I think this is more like to say why we chase running back because right. it's just not as deep of a position. Like you're explaining ADP. I'm, I don't know if I, this is even about ADP. This is about... Uh, maybe if you're saying why we take running backs early, yeah. Because if you get if you get an elite one, it's just it's just such a powerful weapon. <laughs> um, and wide receiver tends to be a little flatter in terms of. But the when we're talking elite, like the difference, you'd be looking at the difference between wide receiver one or wide receiver three and wide receiver yeah. eighteen. Yeah, I don't know. Look, I'm, I'm if you think this is useless, I'm not saying that at all. I'm trying to. Be. <laughs> I'm trying to process it and and make it make sense in my head. And um, I do agree that the difference between running back 12 and running back 18 is bigger than the difference between wide receiver 12 and wide receiver 18. I just think a lot of times when you're looking at running back 12, you're looking at wide receiver 5. Um, yeah, that could be. Or 6 or something like that. Also, right. I sort of explained it wrong. Uh, oh. that I'm realizing. No, I, I, <laughs> that's, that's I mean, the, the gap is bigger at running back. Uh, Just last year, there wide, is the, receiver, wide receiver 12, this is total points, not on a per-game basis, was three points per game better than wide receiver 36. Wide receiver 12 was T. Higgins. Wide receiver 36 oh, was Van Jefferson. Game. Yeah. No, 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 no. Points point. per game. There was a 51-point difference between those two guys. One was wide receiver 12. One was wide receiver 36. That's a big difference, though, 51 points. It's three per week. A big difference. Very big difference. Three per week. Okay. The difference between wide receiver 12 and 18 was only 11 points last year, full season. The difference between running back 12 and 18 was 16.2. That was in full PPR. And whatever. All right. Disregard. 
Uh, this I got some emails here. Fantasy football at CBSI.com. Hopton Wellington. What a name. Hopton Wellington says, I love all your work as a collective, but Heath's analytical way of ranking has always appealed to me. Does Heath have any articles or advice on how to start my own projections? I'm busy finding the loophole. I believe the difference between wide receiver eight, seven and wide receiver 18 was bigger than the difference between running back seven and running back 18 last year. Um, do I have any suggestions on how I can only tell you about how my process works? Um, there are tools out there. I don't know, Dave, do you remember any of the places there are, there are places that are providing tools for building your own projections. Um, I used, you, when I did projections, I used an Excel spreadsheet. That's, I use uh, Google sheets. Um, Same. All right. I build it on a team by team basis. So I'll build out the entire chiefs offense, the entire giants offense, so on and so forth. And Ugh, then why? what's that? I, why would you even do that for the giants? You poor soul. Well, you got to know like which wide receiver you should be looking at in, in round 13 and where to take Saquon. one. Yeah. I'm just joking, but <laughs> yeah. um, I was a giant, it was a giant stick. Also, I didn't realize I had that cam Akers comment up for the last 30 minutes. Sorry about that. YouTube. Uh, go ahead, Heath. Um, well, uh, yeah. I, so I started, I build on a team basis and then put in player efficiency at kind of around that and then try to meld the two to make sense. Um, but I, I think you have to kind of start with past performance and then project, like, if you think someone's going to be better or worse than what they've been in the past, as long as you can justify it. This is from Harold. 12 team standard scoring league. Uh, let's see. Standard one year, one year keeper. Straight line draft. What is this? Straight line draft picking. Does that mean non snake? Um, I'm keeping Christian McCaffrey. The players available in standard scoring should be Adams, Cup, Mixon, Kelsey, Aaron Jones, or Nick Chubb. Who would be your top three from that group in a non PPR league? Adams, Cup, Mixon, Kelsey, Aaron Jones, Chubb. Mixon's going to be at the top of the list. You said non PPR? Yeah. Yes. Mixon, Cup, Jones. I have Chubb one spot ahead of Jones. Non PPR. Okay. Mm -hmm. From John. Which three sound better in a full PPR, two running back, three receiver league? Christian McCaffrey, Zeke, and Saquon. Justin Jefferson, Zeke, and Saquon. Christian McCaffrey, Zeke, and Pittman. Justin Jefferson, Zeke, and Pittman. You know what I'm going to say. I actually have no idea what you're going to say. Keith knows exactly back. what I'm going to say. McCaffrey, it, Zeke, Saquon? Yes. I would say McCaffrey, Zeke, Pittman. And, but it's weird because he has Saquon listed third as if he's right. taking, like I would say the best one would be McCaffrey, Saquon, Pittman. Yes, I would agree. But I would rather have Pittman or, no, I might have Saquon higher than, I, I'm probably not taking three running backs. McCaffrey, if I could, if I could make it McCaffrey, Saquon, yeah. Pittman. Yeah, McCaffrey, Saquon, Pittman. Yes. Well, I McCaffrey, would love that. Jefferson, Pittman would be better. <laughs> McCaffrey, Saquon, <laughs> and Jefferson. Let's do that. Uh, here is... Throwing Taylor while you're at it. Daniel in a tiny town an hour north of Tampa. Tiny town an hour north of Tampa. Uh, let's go with... Uh, I don't know. I was oh. going to say Newport Richie, but I don't think that's anywhere near there. Dave, jeez. Amelia Island. I don't go. know if that's an hour, and it might Dear not be north of Tampa. It might be west of Tampa. That's fine. Just stick with it with conviction. Dear some combination of Adam, Dave, Jamie, Heath, Dan, Jacob, Emery, and a surprise guest. My long-running 12-team standard scoring league redraft is transitioning to full point per first down. It's still non-PPR. Cool. Non -PPR. Quarterbacks do not get rushing points for first downs. Which players and types of players gain and lose value in a point per first down league? Players who get lots of yards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think Which about think about what it takes to get a first down. You know, 
There's a bit. It's, it's easier for a receiver to typically do it than a running back. People have done the math on this, and the easiest way to project it is about 5% of your yardage is a projection for your first downs for the year. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor. Let's see. According to – could this really be right? Yeah, I think it could. Rushing first downs last year. This is from NBC Sports. Jonathan Taylor had 107 rushing first downs. Oh, wow. (laughs) Guess who number two was? He plays in the NFC East. Jalen Hurts. Uh, I don't know if there were quarterbacks. Oh, no, uh, Jalen Hurts was seventh. Running back. Second in rushing first downs. NFC East. Ezekiel Elliott. Antonio Gibson. Hmm. So Jonathan hmm. Taylor had 107. Antonio Gibson had 65. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay, so take what I said and do the opposite. A uh, wide receive. Uh, let's see, receiving first downs. Is that on here? But that, yeah, again, I don't know. this is Najee Harris had sixty-two. Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook. You know, you want yards and touches. I don't know. I, I do think points for first down is really cool and I maybe better than maybe better than PPR. And I it could be the wave of the future. I From like Shannon. half point for first down, half PPR. Yeah, I like that too. Oh, what a headache. From Shannon. It's like three extra buttons you have to click at the beginning of the year, and it doesn't change anything ever again. Yeah, Put but that guy in, thinking in, about it on draft day. <laughs> uh, that dude's from the villages, by the way. Keep uh, Keeper League is Cup, Chase, Jonathan Taylor, and Chubb. Let's see how many you can keep here. Um, I'm 100% keeping Jamar Chase and Jonathan Taylor, so then it's Cup and Chubb. Uh, it's Cup. Oh, yeah, okay. Which one? No, who Cup over Chubb. Yep. Okay. He's worried about the Stafford injury plaguing Cooper Cup. If you knew that it was John Walford for 17 games, you might consider might consider Chubb over Cup. But it, I don't think it's going to be that way. I think he'll get Stafford for a good portion of the year. At least I hope so. Please hit like before you leave the show, the uh, stream. And thank you so much, everybody. We'll talk to you on Tuesday. We won't have a show on Monday. This is your Monday episode. Tuesday, we'll come back at you with RB Preview Part 1, Wednesday Part 2, and then Thursday and Friday, Wide Receivers. We'll have bonus pods if there's any big breaking news. For Dave and Heath, I'm Adam. Have a great Sunday and Monday. Talk to you Tuesday on Fantasy Football.